is the first of our pre-season series sessions. So for the next four Sundays and then beyond, we've got uh, a guest who's joining me to look at their experience of mental health, fitness and well-being through cricket. And tonight it's Finn Hudson Prentice from Derbyshire County Cricket Club. Um, an all-rounder who'll be able to give a perspective for bat ball and in the field as, as well. And one of the things which got quite a lot of feedback thin recently was when I shared a little clip of when we spoke last summer where you reflected on your experience of, of a key setback in your career, that of, of having left your previous county. So we'll come back to that at some point as we go along as well. But just to start off with, what, we, what we're trying to get across through opening up cricket is the idea of the mental health continuum so we've all got mental health and at one end it's our very best at the other end it's our very worst and then of course most people will be somewhere in the middle and we'll move between the different areas of it so for me cricket's a great example of where the mental application skills that we can have are really important so I'd like us just to start by looking at the idea of focus in games and, and the kind of tools and techniques that you use for that? Uh, yeah, so obviously that time at Sussex was, was tough. Um, going on to focusing on stuff in matches, I use a lot of uh, routine work. So I think earlier in my career, I struggled quite a lot um, with sort of focus um, in general, just concentration levels during the field, whether I'd be batting, um, even sometimes bowling, even though you're only bowling over at a time and sort of get a bit of time at fine leg or wherever you're fielding to sort of think about it. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I worked a lot with Steve Kirby recently and he sort of given me a lot of ideas about how to sort of pan in and out of the game. Um, so like a lot of breathing techniques, um, which slow down your mind and your thought processes and keeps you sort of grounded. Um, whether that be just I stand at the top of my mark for instance when I'm bowling and instead of having a million thoughts running through my head and losing particular focus on what, what my plan is and what the team's plan is um, I'll just take a few seconds at the top to just breathe and think about it slow breathing, count to three and then able to deliver, deliver the skill again um, which I think translates quite well to all, all sort of facets of the game, to be honest, I think you can do that wherever you are in the field or when you're bowling or when you're batting. I think it's a great technique um, to use. And then, uh, as I said earlier, routine. So that obviously helps build that by doing that in practice and in, in warm-ups and stuff before games. So uh, just, just practicing routines, making sure they're consistent throughout, throughout your career sort of thing, instead of it being like a bit fluid and up and down make sure that you do have a set set routine that you can go back to when you're struggling or if you think you've lost focus um yeah. you can go back to those set routines and what would a routine in that area look like for, for you finn how would you put that together um so in a pre-match routine i'm i'm usually one of the first players to arrive at the ground i'll make sure i'm there quite early um if we're playing a four-day game that for instance starts at 11 o'clock i'll try and get there for about 8 45 um in the morning um, have a nice cup of coffee and sort of think about the day ahead really that's my first sort of sort of routine I'll have a coffee at the ground organise my kit wherever we are home or away uh, and then I'll get, get myself into a net have a bat for 10 minutes sort of think about what wicket we're on what the, what the bowler is going to be looking to do um, just have 10 minutes 10-15 minutes and then go into a out of that into a bowling routine so I have, a, I have a checklist when I bowl so certain things to do with my action which I then run through for five, ten minutes before before I go into like two or three overs off a full run. Um, and then usually we meet up as a team. So I'm able then to sort of tick those things off. That's my pre-game pre routine. I've ticked the mental side by just having that 15 minutes before uh, when I get there, have a coffee, think about, the, think about the day ahead. And then I can sort of just crack on with the skills work. Um, in terms of match routines, like during the game, um, they can tend to change, especially with T20 cricket, how fast that moves. So it can, can tend to change around a bit. But in four-day cricket, I'll usually just have a simple, when I get out into the middle, I'll have, obviously, you have talks with your, with your partner. But in terms of like my kit, I'll move my kit around before I reach ball, um, tap my bat on the crease, and I know then I'm ready to face the ball. So it's a little routine. I couldn't tell you exactly what I do, but I know I do it. I sort of tap certain parts of my gloves and, get myself set and it's pretty consistent I know that um, 
and then bowling again as I said my routine will be more focused on breathing rather than um, sort of cues like that it'll be more focused on my breathing um, making sure that's consistent because if that's consistent at least then I can control what I'm doing up until the ball's released yeah how common is it for your teammates or players around the circuit to have these kind of routines is that something that's well practiced or you're a little bit of an outlier in that sense um i think players are very aware of it um especially now you see the likes of labashane and smith the way they have their crazy sort of routines when they're batting um that they go through every ball and the way they act but that's all about, about their mental health isn't it really that's about them trying to get through periods and that's how they switch themselves on um I think a lot of the guys are aware of that. I know a few of the lads at Derbyshire have their own specific, specific routines. Um, Matt Critch is the same. He gets to the ground very early and has a very good specific routine, which he goes through every day. Um, same as Lewis Reese. So, yeah, yeah, you obviously notice it. Um, you see the other players doing it. Maybe it's not spoken about enough. I know we get nudged, and especially when you're a young player, you sort of get asked, oh, are you, do you have a routine? Do you know what you're doing? It's one of those sort of like, yeah, yeah, of course, coach, like trying to impress them, but you don't really have one. Um, yeah. I was very much like that when I was at Sussex. I didn't have a set routine. I'd just sort of turn up and do tick tick boxes so the coaches would uh, would think I'm doing the right things. But realistically, it wasn't helping my performance. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I know that it's very, people are very, very aware of it, but maybe we could nudge each other every now and then and say, oh, are you doing this right? Are you sticking to this, that and the other? And maybe if you speak about it more to other people, then you get that trust between between players, I guess, to make sure that you're not letting each other down blah, 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 by not sticking to what you know works. Mm. I think it's some really important things there. I know we've got some some younger players involved um, this evening or will be watching it on demand. So there's some things there to, to take away, not just going through the motions, doing what you think your coach wants you to do, but he actually has some, <laughs> some use for it. Um, in terms of, the, terms of focus, something I'm going to throw in here that I always mention in, in sessions is this, of course, is something that can be practised. It's a skill. And as Finn said, there's lots of things in there which um, he's developed as techniques and things which he consciously does and doesn't just leave it to chance. Uh, and this, in his case, using things like breathing exercises, um, a great route to that, if people want to explore it further, is, of course, the practice of mindfulness. So based on these four sessions that are running over these next few weeks, what I'm going to do is drop in a little challenge that hopefully people can then build on over these weeks. So if people haven't already tried um, some of the headspace content, and that's my, my thing to throw out at this stage, it's just been added to Netflix. So when you sat there just uh, flicking through endlessly what you might watch, there's a 20 minute little episode that you can, can use. Um, and that's something which can help develop focus and concentration as well as helping to, to switch off. So there's my, my first thing for people to look at if they're going to use this across the next four weeks. Um, okay, we'll move on past focus um, to looking at this area of dealing with with setbacks. So I think if we start off here, Finn, in terms of maybe some examples of, of, of setbacks and where things haven't gone well and then what you've done to get through them. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously in that clip that you you showed a, a week or so ago that I had a, um, I was at Sussex, uh, start of my career. I um, was there from a junior up until I made my debut in 2014, I think it was. Um, and I was there as a pro for two years. Um, I got released by them at the end of 2016, sort of like last minute. Um, at the end of the season, I got given a few chances and didn't, didn't quite take them. And got released in that season and yeah, I was distraught. Um, I, I don't think it really hit me for a good few weeks. Um, I was very down in the dumps. I took it out on myself quite a lot. I didn't, didn't think I'd, I thought it was all my fault. I thought, like, that's it, I'm done. I, I can't play cricket again. Um, and then it, it's, it got easier, obviously, over a bit of time. I started to realise what I was doing, what I did wrong, what I had a little reflection time. I think it took me a while to want to look at it, but I ended up after a month or so just looking back, went over to Australia for four or five months and played club cricket over there and had a really good time, just learned to love the game again, I guess, because I think that period when I was at Sussex, I sort of fell out of love with it a bit. Um, I was focused so solely on scoring runs and 
performance based stuff, which in, in cricket is obviously so tough as it is. Like, you know, it's a very up and down game. Um, unless you're the best of the best, it's very hard to be consistent. Um, so I think I'd, I looked at that, reviewed that, just thought, you know what, well, I, I love the game of cricket. That's, I, I started playing cricket because I love it. Um, and luckily enough, it, it was my job. Um, went back to England after that period in Australia, had a really good summer with East Grinstead in Sussex um, and ended up on the phone to the MCC Young Cricketers. Steve Kirby was in charge of that then. And he just asked me to come play a few games and subsequently joined onto that program. Um, but I don't think that would have been possible if I didn't find that love for the game again. Um, if I just went straight back into it as soon as possible, I definitely wouldn't be where I am now. Um, so, yeah, it's obviously I think it's, it's important to have, have high expectations in terms of performance. But I think if, the love of, if you lose that love of the game, I think that's where it could be more problematic than a, a few bad performances. Yeah, definitely. We had, um, I did a session earlier on this week with Paul Horton, who's just finished his career, and, and Paul was saying there were time, times in his uh, playing career where he did lose that love for it and felt really out of sorts as a, as a result of it. And I think anyone at any level of the game can find times where they just don't enjoy it, and we commit a lot of time to it at a recreational level. And then, of course, you've got your four-day games and, and so on in, in the professional game, so it can be no place to hide, really, if, you, if you're not enjoying it. What about the setbacks that you might get a little bit more day to day or, or match to match, perhaps a bad spell or a little run of, of low scores? What's your mechanisms to get through that? Yeah, um, so obviously <laughs> cricketers go through bad, bad trots all the time. Um, personally, I've had a few bad runs um, and it's been a combination of factors why that's happened. But the things that have got me back to your best to sort of just just knowing that you've done the work um obviously being a professional cricketer doesn't happen overnight you've done thousands of hours of practice and thousands of thousands of hours of game time so knowing you've done the work knowing you ca you've done it in the past um i think that's where my mental headspace has let me down maybe i'll get so hot in the moment but if i think if i take a second and think back i know that i've done it in the past i know i've scored runs or taken wickets at a particular level and you, you know that you can get back there so if you're going and you're keeping to your routines as as i spoke about earlier you're, you're sticking to what you know and what you're doing in the games um yeah it, it will all come back it just it's just that resilience of can i can i keep doing the right things in the nets can i keep um running up and doing my checkpoints with the ball uh before the games at training am i still consistent with my breathing patterns um and if you can say yes to all those questions then you're not really in the wrong. Um, occasionally you'll make mistakes. No matter who you are, you'll make mistakes. But as long as you know you're true to yourself that you've done the work beforehand and you're staying consistent, I think that's where the way people get out of their, their bad runs of form is by doing that consistently day in, day out. And then those runs of form still come along, but they're not as long. They're not as, uh, they don't get dragged out for as long. They're, they're a lot shorter. So that's, that's how I go about it. I try and remind myself of that. I'm quite up and down in my personality. I'm very hot and cold. So I try and go back to those those basics and just think, look at that. Look at that innings you played two months ago that won us the game. Or look at that innings you played three weeks ago where you, you were timing everything, even though you only got 40. But there's small things that you can draw on and then mm -hmm. take them out into your practice and then the intensity into a game. So, yeah, that's what I, that's how I'd go about it. Terrific. You, you, one of the things that, I was, that I'm going to mention for my next little... Uh, idea for people to to maybe follow is based on the the love of the game that you've mentioned i think it's a terrific example that we've just got we get so caught up in the outcomes and this can be in in other things that we do that we forget why we actually picked up the battle of the ball in the in the first place and your routines are a really good example of how um we can focus the, our attention on what we control rather than chasing things which may be outside of that so my one in terms of dealing with setbacks Perhaps at this time of, of our lives, when the, all these things are going on outside of our control with the, the pandemic, it's important to try and bring our focus a little bit um, back to home and, and think about how we deal with, with the setbacks and when things aren't going well. So my one here is, if people don't already, to try and think about writing some of these things down, to keep a journal, to keep a, a diary of some sort, and just see how that goes. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be a lot of writing. But can that be a little tool for people to, 
to connect with. Um, I was listening to a, to a podcast just the other week, Ricky Ponting talking about how he would want to write down what he was going to achieve the next day so that he had it planned out so he could reference it. He didn't have to be thinking about these things uh, in depth on the day. Same with Richie McCaw. I watched a documentary about him yesterday. These things keep, keep coming up. So that could be worth a go. Keeping a journal, um, seeing how that feels. It might not work for you, but it might be the thing that makes a really big difference. So our third topic now is supporting teammates. So this is in kind of two parts to it. One, how does the team environment help you? And what examples have you got <clears throat> of where you've been able to help s someone else within that team environment? Um, yeah, so obviously as a cricket player, you you your main focus is the team. It's never really yourself. Obviously, you have your individual performances, but at the end of the day, it's about winning games for the team you're playing for or making sure that um, you're doing everything you can to make sure the team's successful, um, whether that be on or off the field. Um, so, yeah, obviously, having a good relationship with teammates and enjoying the people you're working with is obviously crucial. I mean, if that's county, club, whatever level, um, and almost having that, especially with teammates, but also with your coaching staff, um, comes down to a lot of trust um, and believing in what they're telling you and what you're telling yourself and, and being able to share that. Um, I think in the dressing room at Derbyshire, we have very good cohesion between the players. So we're able to share things with each other, which maybe you wouldn't be able to share with other people, which is great. Um, ever since I've joined the club, it's been um, really, really easy to sort of speak to people about issues I might be having off the field. Um, things I've been struggling with and vice versa. Like people have been able to say, oh yeah, this is, this is an issue I've been having, whether that's inside the game or outside the game. Um, so obviously that cohesion in the team and the trust that we have is vital. Um, in terms of areas which it's worked for me, um, I know at the end of last 2019 um, season or middle of 2019 cricket season, um, when we we're having a real tough time in 2020 cricket, um, and I that was at the start of my T20 career. I hadn't played many games, and I I didn't I wasn't really sure on my role and how I was how I was going to develop in the team. And I felt like I was a bit of a spare part in the eleven. Um, I didn't feel like I was contributing. I didn't feel like I was uh, giving much to the team. And I remember speaking to Alex Hughes and Lewis Reese about it, and just saying because they're obviously two seamers themselves. And I just spoke to them about it and told them how I felt. And I said I don't really know my role. I don't know what job um I'm wanted to be the, the team want me to do um and I got to speak to them and they said look chat to Billy the captain obviously Billy Godderman they're like chat to Billy see um let the coaches know they're like look mate they're not going to shoot you down if you don't know your role sort of thing they're like look just be open and honest so I got to speak to Corky and Billy and we sort of set, set about a plan and over the next sort of five or six games I started contributing um and started doing, working on things in training and getting my routines right before games because I knew what role I'd be playing. Um, and I know it sounds so simple. It sounds like such an obvious thing to do. But obviously, as a young player, sort of coming into a team I'd not played in, a, in this format before, I sort of was just like, yeah, yeah, just rabbit in the headlights. Whereas if I took two minutes before maybe the first three or four games I was playing and took two minutes and just sat down with the coaches or the captain and stuff and just said, look, I'm, I'm not too sure on my role. I'm not too clear. What, what do you guys think? What's the best role for me in this team? Um, and I think if you don't have trust, those conversations don't come about. But I think because I was such a young player, I obviously built that trust quite quickly um, with the senior players, the way they acted, obviously Alex and Lewis. And then I was able to um, put that into action and speak to the captain and the coach. And after that, obviously things went really well. We got to, we got to finals day in the end that year as well. Um, so yeah, I think obviously that's key. That's, that's one of the areas that really helped me was just having a bit of trust in your, in your teammates and then them being able to just put me in the right direction. What, what is it about those, those guys that are in that particular dressing room that, that made you feel to begin with that you could trust them? Is there any of their behaviours that you think, yeah, I can, I can look to that and think this gives me a good guide that these would be, these would be people who can, who can look out for me? Um, it was a, it's a team environment since I've, being at the club where they, everyone drops their egos and they don't, there's no ego involved in anything they do. Like the senior players like Wayne Madsen, Billy, 
Uh, we had Ravi Rampal. There was absolutely no ego between any of them. Um, like you'd watch them train or play, and the way they'd speak to the younger players or the other players in the team, you'd think that no one, neither of them had played a game, sort of thing. Like that, you wouldn't be able to tell that they were three of the best players around the county circuit. So, like that's that's one of those things that I think is hard to find. I think sometimes, obviously, you get judged on your career and your performance, and it's hard to go up to a player like Wayne Madsen, who scored countless amounts of runs, and ask him for advice because you're you're a bit nervous about his stature as a player, but walking into that dressing room he was very warm and friendly they all are they all come up to you and speak to you and ask you questions and that's something that I, I haven't experienced much in my career before um, and it was definitely a massive factor obviously as to what I was saying about gaining trust so quickly with, with those teammates and feeling like I really do um, have that belief and trust in it from them to me yeah that's brilliant and I guess that's at any level that people play cricket at we play team sport for a reason is for those connections and that ability to be able to, to help out, help others, let them help us and so on. So it sounds like if someone had had something they were struggling with away from the, the field and uh, away from the game, that you in an environment where there would be people that, that you could talk to about that. Yeah, a hundred percent. I've had a few conversations with um, a few of the lads, especially Billy. Um, and he, he, like they always say, like if there's anything you need to talk about, just just give us a shout, give us a call. I'm only a phone call away. Um, obviously, in these times, usually they'd say if you want to go for a coffee or something, or you want to go for a walk. But obviously, in the world that we're living right now, I think phone calls are, are crucial. So they've obviously said, look, we're obviously in training, but we're in small bubbles at the moment, um, so we don't get to see a lot, a big majority of the players. Um, and they've on the group chat, lads, been chatting away and saying if, if anyone's got anything to worry about, anything they're worried about, or want to have a conversation, just give me a call. And I think that's that's absolutely crucial. Like it's like you said, there's that bond between players. That's 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 why they play the game, and it's very evident since I've been at Derbyshire. That is how they play the game, which is brilliant. Like it makes you feel so much more at ease and lets you relax and just enjoy playing cricket. Really, magic, great. And I think that's the one that can be. My, my little add-on here in terms of people are looking to put together four weeks of things that they can do to help their own mental health and fitness connection is the big one it's there for everyone we're missing it in a lot of ways at the moment but is there someone that we can connect with between now and next week whether that be a message actually an old-fashioned phone call FaceTime whatever it is have a zoom room um, and have that intent because what Finn's spoken about there is not things that anyone would be listening and going, oh my God, I'd never thought of being open and approachable. They're all things that we think we, we would be able to do. It's just having that intent is really, really um, important there. So we've got a few minutes left. I'm going to open it here to people for any <laughs> questions. I've got a couple my, myself, but I will give preference to anything there. So we'll just give it a, a bit of a pause if anyone wants to put it either in the Q&A or the chat, just fire them in there and in half a minute or so we can, uh, we can start looking at them. Just a competition for who can type the quickest here which is a little bit of pressure. Um, okay, we got one from uh, from Ewan, which I'm going to go on the back of here as well. So Ewan's asking, who's the best player you've played with or against? Um, when I was at Sussex, I played with Jofra Archer when he was young. He played four or five first-class games at that stage, but he, he just started to really take take to county cricket he took a couple of seven wicket hauls um, which I, I was standing at short leg for and they looked pretty nasty um, in the Derbyshire team definitely Wayne Madsen um, would be one of the best players I've played with Leas Deploy as well who's coming through left-hander he's a serious player um, and Ravi, Ravi Rampal um, obviously played a lot of international cricket for the West Indies um, I think he's got Sachin Tendulkar out the most out of anyone of all time, I think. Um, 
So obviously he, he's up there. His skills were unbelievable in white ball cricket, especially his Yorks and stuff at their death. So um, you take your pick out of those four, probably between Joffre and Joffre and Wayne um, in terms of Joffre with the ball and then Wayne with the bat. Um, so yeah, those two probably. Brilliant. Uh, and, and my one on this is, who's the mentally fittest or toughest, whichever way you want to look at it, player that you, again, have played with or against? Who stands out in terms of between the years? Um, I'd, I'd say, honestly, I've played against, I think I've played against Dawid Milan about three or four times and he's scored 100 every time. <laughs> so who or a double hundred, he scored 200 against us last year. So he, he'd definitely be up there, the strongest mentally I've, I've played against. Um, yeah, he, 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 we used to try and get him out in any way possible. And every time we played against him, he's ended up scoring over 100. So he'd definitely be up there mentally strongest, obviously a very, very good player himself anyway, um, as his stats show and his international rankings show. But he just it, sometimes he, you just look at him and he, Seems almost like there's nothing going on. He's just so focused on batting and scoring runs. So he'd definitely be up there the most mentally yeah, tough it. I've played against. That's um, a, a, a great shout. If anyone wants to find out a bit more about David Milan's processes, he did a podcast with Tom Scully of Cricket Mentoring, probably going back two or three years. But he talks a lot about his, his routines and stuff there. So um, that's a good one to, to look out for. Um, got one here from, from Johnny. How do you cope with the expectations which come along with being a pro? Um, I actually had a conversation with my partner about that the other day. Um, and I've spoken to my mum quite a lot about it. Um, I think when I first signed a professional contract at Sussex, I was very much... Um, I think the expectation was too much on myself rather than from anyone else. I think I put too much pressure on myself by sort of thing, labelling it as a job. Um, which obviously isn't a good headspace to be in from ball one if you're walking out into the middle and you're putting yourself under pressure. Um, but over over the years, I'm 25 now. I've been playing for um, quite a few years. Um, if I, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I've been playing playing for a little bit longer now than than I was when obviously I was at Sussex. And I think the expectation almost has dropped off because I, I, I like I said before, I'm enjoying the game. Um, I've done, I'm doing the work a lot more now. I think I've worked out how to train um, a lot better. So using my time a lot better, um, what time I'd prefer to have off and just relax and have a day to myself and what day I'd, I'd, I know I need to hit the ground running and have a big day. And obviously doing those things off the field then translates usually to good performances on the field. Um, and if it doesn't come about, at least then I know that within myself, I've, done the work off the field to make sure I've, I've at least got the best chance when I'm playing and then if it doesn't come off at least I can then reflect on that and just go back to what I was doing before so I think that expectation sort of turned into into that to be honest um, I think it's turned into more routine based and training based and then the expectation sort of disappears a little bit um, so yeah that's that's probably how I, how I deal with it now Yeah thank you, that's a really good question as well and um, what is what has cricket taught you about life? What lessons have you taken from the sport, the game, your job into just everyday life? Um, one of the things that definitely sticks out is that the game owes you nothing, um, which is the same as anything really. Like you, the cricket owes you nothing. Um, you, yeah, you might be, you might have had a good game two weeks ago, three weeks ago, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get anything coming coming forward. You need to still work hard. You still need to do the hours and put the hours in. I think that goes for anything. Like you might have uh, might have a really good opportunity at work and you take it and you think, great, I'm, I don't need to work as hard now. I've gone up a rung, uh, a, a rung on the ladder. Um, whereas you sort of look at it and you might think, I need to actually work twice as hard now because um, nothing is nothing's given to you. Um, which I think is probably the most important thing. I think when I was younger, um, I thought everything would fall fall on my lap a little bit. Um, I didn't think I'd need to work as hard as soon as I signed the contract. I sort of just took it a bit for granted. Um, whereas now I sort of realise that, okay, you have one good game, but then that means you need to have two good games and three good games. And the more you string it together, obviously the higher you're going to go. Um, rather than taking a step back, it's more like, okay, I've done that now. Now I need to work twice as hard. Um, 
I think that's probably what cricket's taught me about life really is that it doesn't really owe you much um, and <laughs> life will always try and beat you down somehow um, but if you don't let it then it, it won't so yeah a final one I think this is a really great one to to finish up with uh, we've got from Tim who's the most supportive person in your career uh, and why were they supportive and, and what was their influence um, that would definitely be Steve Kirby um, so unfortunately he's moving on now from Derbyshire he's got a great opportunity down at Somerset um, but I've been with him for, for the last three and a half years now and um, been working underneath him um, he would be one of my close friends now I'd say um, rather than a coach which is quite quite incredible really I think that sort of relationship bond that we've had um, he's made me feel at ease doing anything I remember when I was at my lowest um, when I first joined the MCC young cricketers and he took me under his wing and gave me a lot of confidence he used to take me out for a coffee um, for a chat just chat about anything other than cricket um, became a friend and somebody who I could trust off the field um, and then when we went into training and stuff he just that that relationship that was built up um, between me and him just sort of made me trust him and he was telling me that he had full belief in me backed me and he knew I'd make it um, he just said you need to He'd keep your focus and he'd, he'd pull me up on things. If I ever did something wrong, he'd make sure I'd know about it, that's for sure. Um, a few issues that I might have had or things off the field that he didn't like about me as a person or didn't agree with, he'd, he'd pull me up on it and challenge me, which I think is crucial. I think it, it, as a relationship player and coach, um, making sure you challenge challenge your players, but also make sure that they're, they're doing okay off the field. Um, so he, he's a great mix of that. Um, so, yeah. That's great, yeah. And as Tim said in the chat, that sounds like a, a great example of connection, one of those things that we're, we're always talking about in terms of maintaining good mental health and, and fitness. So that brings us towards the end. Um, Finn, thank you very much for all your time. There's lots of stuff which, um, w which we've got out here about very specific tools and techniques as well as your thoughts on it. And I think every person who's who's been involved can, can take that away as food for thought. So wish you well with your rest of your pre-season training and then hopefully we get people back in the grounds to watch you do your stuff when the summer comes. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.